Today we're going to take a look at Animal Empire Conquer or Be Conquered, a high player count empire building card game from Down Under. First up, thanks Half Monster Games for sending us a copy of this game to check out. All right, the card game Animal Empire was designed by Jack Ford Morgan and features art by Baron Chamberlain and Craig Lee. It was initially funded on Kickstarter in 2019 and is currently being published by Half Monster Games. On the box, Animal Empire claims to be for two day players, but I gotta say you need at least three, I think, to fully enjoy this game and the more the merrier. Games seem to take about an hour, depending on player count. For a good look at what comes in the box, in this small box but high player count card game, check out our unboxing video on YouTube. And one of the first things you will notice about this game is the box. It is a very well-designed box. Like for a small box card game, it's thick and solid and chunky and it flips open like a like a jewelry box or something. Like it's like more like a display case than a box and I dig that. Yeah, certainly a box style you don't see often, but uh, it's only holding 56 cards. Yeah. But like compared to your usual like Uno box where you got to like open the flap and then you always have a hard time closing it because cards get in the way. This is so much nicer. Now inside that box is a two deck card tray, two, two stack of card card tray with a number of cards and a rule book on top. That's pretty much it. Rules are 14 pages long with 11 of that dedicated to explaining how to play the game and the rest thanking all kinds of people because uh, play testers, um, Half Monster has a Patreon page and it was kickstarted. So they thank their Kickstarter backers. Despite some spelling and grammatical errors, uh, the rules are pretty straightforward. Um, they didn't take too long to get through. You can Again, this is one of those games you could probably crack it open, read it while everyone else goes off to make a coffee. By the time they get back, it'll be good to play. I did find a couple things a bit ambiguous, but it was one of those ones where like, here, can you read this? What do you think? And every answer we came up with doing that did match what the right solution was when I talked to the designer. So it, it was clear enough. Um, I do know there is a second printing of this rule book in the works that is going to fix all of the issues that have been addressed by reviewers and other people who have checked out the game. So that's already in process. Well, it's a shame some solid editing didn't catch errors, but it's one of those details that can really hurt a game's reputation because details matter. Yeah, the one that drives me the most is they spell specialization with an S everywhere instead of a Z. And every time, I, I don't know, that one just stuck out at me. And I called them on it and like, oh, it's got to be the European spelling, like the, the English, British versus US. And I'm like, no, I'm in Canada. I know the US. And then I Googled it. And I'm like, no, nowhere in the world seems to spell specialization with an S. Maybe they do in Australia. Maybe there's an Australian spelling of this. I don't know. Specialization meat. I don't know. Whatever it is, there, there was a couple others too. It, that wasn't the one, but that one was just glaring. I was just like, oof. Um, as for the cards, there's a number of different types. There's kingdom cards that have these nice fantasy landscapes, their landscape orientation as well. A matching army card for every kingdom, showing off some pretty um, kick butt looking units, some wilderness event cards, which again have some nice artwork on them and text, and then crown cards, which are really boring. They're crowns and they're just eight, eight different colors. Card quality is okay but not great. Um, they look great. Like the, the printing quality is great. The arts, there's no bleed. Like everything there looks good, but the, they're a little thin and I got to admit every card that came out of my box is slightly warped. Now it's one of those things where just riffle shuffling them the other way seems to have fixed that. Um, they don't have any finish, right? They don't have like a linen finish or anything like that. And they are a bit glossy, which can be a problem depending on the lighting where you play. In my particular basement with my pot lights, it can be an issue. Uh, design and artwork though is fantastic uh the coloring is good the layout's good um it would have been nice to have that physical quality be just that step up like i i don't know who they got to print their game but i feel like they should have just you know did the five mil higher or whatever the next level of card would have been a nice touch I, my only real complaint about the art is that while they they spent some money and got some really great character design for each card they then copy and pasted that character multiple times to fill out the card uh, rather than, you know, paying for an, another another version of the uh, the monster, mm -hmm. um, you just get the same one copy-pasted. It depends on the card, though. Like, some will have three guys on the card, and they're all different. And then you look at the owls, and they're all three the same. Well, and you I, look if, at, like, if the you bulls. look carefully, they're actually just, like, they flip them sometimes. and Sometimes, yeah, I was going to yeah, say there was another one where it was a flip. Yeah, they, yeah they, there they, is they, definitely some yeah, copy-pasted. A, there's a, there's a, so, that's unfortunate. But uh, now that we have an idea of what you get, cards and more cards, what exactly are you going to do with them? 
All right, so the goal of Animal Empire is to control a majority of the kingdoms. Each player starts with one kingdom and the army card associated with that kingdom and one random wilderness card. The remaining kingdoms are just scattered on the board or like the play area, um, placed face down in the center of the table and the wilderness staff shuffled and put there. Nice, simple, quick setup. Yep. Each player's turn, they're going to take two actions. For each action, they do require to use one you to do that action. The actions to choose from are March, which lets you play armies from your hand or move them from one kingdom to another kingdom or go to the wilderness, which gets you a random wilderness card. Capture, which lets you take a kingdom and place it in your tableau, but only if you have a majority there, more cards than your opponent. Battle, where you force an opponent to take back one army from a kingdom you're both at. And four, seize the crown, which is kind of like capture, but instead of capturing a kingdom, you take the player's crown. Um, that makes that player your vassal. Now, more about this interesting mechanic in a bit, because it deserves being talked about separately. Note, you can never eliminate anyone. You can't take their last kingdom, which is that whole taking the crown. If you go to take their last kingdom, instead you take their crown. I mean... Three of those actions are really straightforward, but that fourth one just sounds so different from what we're used to in yeah, games. It is. It is very different. And again, I'll get to the vassaling system in a, in, a, in a little bit. That's what we're talking about on its own. Now, to make things more interesting, all of the armies have special abilities. All but one have one of the four special abilities, and then there's a dragon, and the dragon has all four of these abilities in one. So it's ridiculously powerful, to be honest. Fleet, which gives units extra movement. Attack, which causes opponents' armies to retreat when you move into a kingdom, so you don't have to use that separate action. Defend, which protects ones from attacking. And then Raiders, and what they do is after they capture a kingdom, they can then move to another kingdom. So not only are you fighting players, but a dragon? No, the dragon's actually one of the armies that oh. you can get. So if you own the kingdom of dragons, you get the dragon army. It's just one of the units that the players can control. Okay. It's not a separate independent force in the game. Finally, we have wilderness cards. These are your event break the rules style cards. They all do something special and they are very powerful. Like in a way, when I first read my first couple, I'm like, wow, that's huge. That's too powerful. But they're all like that. So this is in um, a few other games out there like this, like uh, the, the player powers and cosmic uh, encounter, for example, or um, um, Matainai is another game where like the combos just seem ridiculous, but that's by design because by all of them being ridiculous, it's kind of balanced. Now, these can be played at any time, and they do all kinds of things. I'm not going to get into the details. Um, you can give units abilities that they didn't have. You can return kingdoms to the center of the table, allow players to rearrange kingdoms between them, move units, and all kinds of stuff. Now, there are only 14 of these. And what I like about that is that once you play, like, a couple times, you're going to learn these 14 cards, and you get to that chess-like level where it's, in a way, perfect information. It's going to be random which cards everyone gets, but you know what all the cards are that are out there. So do they recycle or are they one and done? Do you need, is there, is there a managing of them or? When you play one, uh, it depends on the card. Some are, you play it, it's done and it goes in the bottom of the deck. So it'll come back up. Other ones go into play. Like I had one that summoned this like Cthulhu like monster and it counted as a unit and it had two of the abilities and it stayed in play until defeated. But then once it was defeated, it went to the bottom of the deck. Other ones were just like, boom, this character has this ability until the end of the turn. Another card stayed in play for an entire round and meant that this one kingdom couldn't be attacked. Like, it, it depends on the card, but all of them do go back into the deck. They all do, they go to the bottom. Now, play just keeps going around the table like this until one side has the majority of the kingdoms, which in every player count is nine. Now, I know here I didn't say until one player owns nine kingdoms, and this is where we get to the vassal system. I said one side. When you capture an opponent's crown, that player becomes your vassal. You are now basically on the same team. You get to count all your kingdoms with your vassal's kingdoms to determine who wins, and if you get nine together between you, you both win the game. Know what I'm saying between you, but technically you can also have more than one vassal. And even your vassal could then have a vassal of their own, which sets up a chain of command. Um, it's even more important to know the only way anyone's going to get nine kingdoms is if you have a vassal. Like it's going to be impossible for one player to do it on their own, which is rather interesting. Except when you play two players, because then it's kind of weird. So lead, lead or be led... There is no hope of hanging out on the side and sniping a win. 
No, this is not a turtle. I'm going to sit back. You're just going to lose if you do that one. Now, there is a bit more to the vassal system. I get into way more detail on the blog. But basically, the Lord can suggest the vassal do some things. But it's still up to that player if they choose to follow orders. And then there's a way to punish and reward vassals where you can take away or give them kingdoms. And then interestingly and they warn you that vassals may backstab you in the end and the only way they can actually do this is for another player to take the crown of the lord and what that does is then the lord becomes a vassal of someone else but all their vassals become free again so there's some interesting backstabbing teamwork there now in the end the actual winner of a game is going to be a coalition of players that will include the winning player and all their vassals who together have nine kingdoms right so for a multiplayer card game about animals, I really didn't expect this much liege lord action. No, not at all. I, I totally agree. And what's interesting is not just animals either. So one, one of the best things about Animal Empire is the, the the artwork is really neat. Plus, there is some background information. Each of the um the, the cards has a bit of flavor text that gives you a little bit of a look into this world, which at first I thought was like medieval fantasy and possibly even Roman because there's definitely a Roman aesthetic to many of the units. But it's like a mix of sci-fi and fantasy and there's there's demons and there's golems and there's a dragon so it's not just anthropomorphic creatures but they're definitely like there's zebra troops and there's elephant troops so you got that going on too um like from what i understand there's a little brief paragraph introducing it sometime in the different future where animals have evolved to be sentient and then also somehow also became bipedal which i've never quite understood that aspect of anthropomorphism that if they're why, why why being bipedal is better what's interesting that i did not realize when i was first reviewing this game and it wasn't until i was doing research for this review the Animal Empire was actually originally a setting for a pen and paper role-playing game, also published by Half Monster Games. And it was actually the RPG that was created first. And like for the fans of the series, this is like, oh, this is the board game version of Animal Empire. So that's kind of interesting. So all right, I guess that makes things a little bit more understandable. As a way of playing out the major actions of kingdoms in an RPG, the concepts start to make a lot more sense. Yeah, I get it. It, it, it fits. It, it's different that's for sure now moving past the art let's let's go to what we think of the actual gameplay and i gotta say this is a mixed bag like I, the simplicity is nice like those four actions are really simple like like it's not hard and you only have four options talking about making games simple it's do i play a card do i kick someone out or do i conquer something i have majority on like that's it um and but the thing is like the rule book's like 11 pages i just thought it was going to be more complicated but that's it. Like, it's just, you get two actions, you take some things. And at first I liked it. I'm like, wow, this is nice and quick. But then it just started to feel the same. Like, it just started to feel repetitive. Especially if it's like, all right, someone tries to take my thing. I defend. I kick them out. Oh, they tried to take it again. I guess I better defend again. I kick them out. And it just seemed to go back and forth a lot. You attack, I defend. You attack, I defend. Now, what broke that, and it's something we didn't realize in the first bit of play, were the wilderness cards. And that's where things got mixed up is you would go back and forth and suddenly there'd be this big change to the game state because someone would play the, one of these powerful wilderness cards and that would mess with the status quo and all of a sudden things would start progressing again. So how much of that, that breakup is, is luck of the draw versus skill? I think I, the big... Again, once you know the 14 different cards, you could probably go fishing for them. Mm -hmm. Definitely in your earlier plays, it's going to be luck. It's going to be, like, oh, look at this neat thing I can do that breaks the stalemate. But then later, it could turn into, I need to find that card, except with eight players, you have the cards, more than half the cards are going to be in play at all time at the start of the game, right? So again, it's it's got that element of knowing it, but there is definitely luck on who gets which card. Right. Now, I also really like the bit that every kingdom had one army. Like, it just thematically made sense. If I take over this kingdom, I get that kingdom army, and I get to add it with all my armies in my hand. But you still only get two moves. So even having, like, a horde of armies didn't really mean you got to do a lot more. It just, I, I don't know, it was something neat about that. Like, it, to me, it reminded me of Shogun. Because in Shogun, when I take over a spot, I get the card for that spot. And now I have more options on my turn because I have that spot to use. But it, I, it, it's neat. I, I, there's some, something about that. It was kind of neat. 
I, I can't say from hearing it, I can't say Shogun really leaps out at me, but I get from the experience that you're you're where you're seeing that. Yeah, it's just it's that collection of cards that give you more things you can do, I guess. Now the highlight here, the the like the killer app, the neat part here is that vassal system. It's kind of it's a it's solid concept. Like it's an interesting thing. Like I had fun playing around with that and even having theoreticals, not that didn't come up during play, but just talking about how well if I vassaled you and you vassal me and this would happen. And I, I just get this feeling, and I have no clue if I'm if I'm on or off here, but I have this theory that Jack came up with the vassal system and then built a game around it. Because like parts of the, the aspect of it is like you can't win without it. Like, oh, I guess you could, but like it'd be almost impossible to collect a majority of these. Like collect all nine yourself. People like would just gang up on you and break them apart. Well, if you then vassal the people teaming up on you, like I I, I did like that. And it adds an aspect of emergent play that I thought was really neat because you start off, it's a battle royal. It's everyone versus everyone. But then it evolves into a diplomatic team-based game by the end. And that was a neat progression. Yeah. So, well, if you think, I want to skip having both player elimination and multiplayer solitaire, you'd need to find some sort of collaborative solution. And that's what they've come up with. Now, the big problem with this whole Vassal system is it only works at higher player counts. Like, I would say this game's broken and not unplayable, but I wouldn't want to play it ever at two. Like, there, there's just, if I Vassal the other player, I win. Like, well, I, or they backstab me and try to get back, but then I just take away their, like, it, it doesn't. It honestly, I don't think it, I don't recommend anyone playing with two, despite what the box says. At three... It's going to be two players team up on another. Like, it's inevitable. That's what's going to happen. Is two players are going to vassal and they're going to dominate the other player who's probably going to have no chance at that point. And that's just going to get into almost player politics more than actually playing a game. Now, when you get to four, it starts getting a bit interesting. You might get three people vassaled against one, or you might get two teams, or, like, the one person on their own is probably not going to do too well. At least it's, it's, it's a little bit more interesting. And, of course, then it's going to get better going up from there. The, the more kingdoms. Because part of it to think of, too, is... With eight players, you got to collect nine to win. Well, eight are already owned, right? Like they're already out there. I got to steal them from players. I can't just go to the middle of the board and take them. And then it, it's definitely it needs needs the higher player counts to really see that vassal system. Yeah, and I would say even four where it starts working isn't ideal. Um, and the game seems to lend itself a bit better to uneven numbers. So you're not just butting heads team on team. Yeah. Uh, five and seven would be my guess for the sweet spots. Again, I haven't played it yet, but I'm reading about it and, and looking at uh, some other reviews and, and discussions on uh, Board Game Geek and such. Seems like they're probably the, the really sweet spots. Yeah, I can see that. I do dig the art. The setting seems neat. The Vassal system seems like an interesting experiment. Like it, it seems like a game experiment and teamwork, cooperation, and eventual backstabbing. But all of this just felt like it, it needed more. Like it just didn't do enough for me. It, it felt like it almost felt like a subsystem that could be on top of another game, though I don't know what else. Like maybe a big empire game where you're moving units and then this is an aspect of it for playing for like the, the seats on city council or something. I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what I'd do with it. Um, again, this really starts to show what it's good at. It's merit at higher player counts. And this is where I do almost recommend this game i do like is that there are not a lot of games that handle eight players well that aren't party games and that is where this game is is gonna come into the light is like this is a full table of eight people with this vassal system and actual like tactics and strategy in a battlefield with compared to you know let's draw silly pictures or guest trivia that's where i think it's gonna be interesting so if you have a big group if you're one of those and you like everyone playing together like personally i get eight people together i'm like all right two tables of four let's go but if you everyone wants to play something together and you're sick of seven wonders which doesn't work at eight but if you got seven people there aren't a lot of games that fit this niche and that's where i think animal empire has some merit and and, and some some worth is at those high player count where you don't just want a light piece of fluff a, a silly party game where you actually want some negotiation some backstabbing some working together overall i i liked getting to check it out i'm glad glad half monster gave us a chance to look at it but i personally i wanted more i i think i'm gonna have a hard time getting to this one to the table very often going forward well for a more in-depth player uh, look at animal empire you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on reviews 